So if you could open up your notes on page 12 here, we're gonna go straight to food. And I'm gonna show you how I would analyze any chapter before we actually go ahead and study it. So I'm gonna ask myself a couple of questions. Now these are strategies actually just put in place by H1 students that I've seen throughout the years. And a lot of the students that are actually stronger, you'll notice, actually do this subconsciously. They actually automatically do it. Like there's kind of like a hidden intelligence in organization. And people who do very well in the leaving search are more so those who are organized and as we said, study smart. So you know exactly how you're getting examined in terms of what's on the paper now. You know how it's structured out. We will do a little bit more work on that. But if we were just looking at a chapter these are three questions that I would ask myself before I even begin it. Okay, so these are three questions I have here. Now, lucky for you, all of this is in your notes, and I'm going to show you all this stuff anyway, but just in case you were going off and you were trying to do it yourself, you ask yourself, how much marks is it generally worth? How much marks is this worth to me, this study session itself? Okay, and you can see at the top of the page there, I've written in, it's 5 to 7.25%. That's what it has been worth in the past. Now, there's not, not to say that it could be worth a little bit more, as we'll see, as we'll see in, uh, uh, over, as we go through the chapter. However, 5 to 7.25% in the past. Generally, what, where it actually has been is it's been in, a, 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 in section A as a, as a short question, so as a 5 percenter. Now, again, if the experiments come in, it could go a little bit more. Then I would ask myself, how often does it come up? Because there are topics that could come up as massive topics, 60 markers, but they don't come up every single year. Food is, food is on your leaving cert as much as you have to write your leaving cert number on your leaving cert. It is 100% there, absolutely guaranteed. Okay, so you should know this inside out. I'm not even going to mention predictions too much for this because you just should know it inside out. When was the last time it came up? Well, in this case, last year, every single year. And then loosely, if you want to just get a little bit more of a boost to see what other people are thinking, you should maybe have a look at the mocks. Okay, so in terms of the mocks, they actually, weirdly enough, followed my exact leaving cert predictions of, uh, of it's going to be a, a, a tough food question. Last year's question, quite easy. This year's question, uh, you know, made a little bit harder. Okay, now, all I'm doing is we're going to employ a strategy to this chapter. How I, how I put these strategies in place is I say, right, now I know what it's worth. Now I know what sort of time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend on it. What does it break down into? And it's all in your notes here, so you don't have to take this part down. But realistically, we have an introduction to food, what it's about. Then we speak about biomolecules. Okay, fine. And then we, we speak about salt and water. So salts and water. And I'm going to really show you two things that people usually get very, very wrong here. And then there's experiments at the end. So we're going to break it into these four parts for our study here. And that's what the examiner asks questions on in those chunks. Okay, as, you, as you'll see when we go through it. So anyway... Page 12, our introduction here. First of all, it gives you a definition for a biomolecule. Definitions are quite important, but I would not learn them off by heart. I'd make sure I understand them. I'd make sure I'd be able to explain them to a friend. First of all, a biomolecule. So a biomolecule, you're going to see that word a lot outside of food as well. Very important you know what the biomolecules are, so definitely make sure you mark that. It's an organic substance produced by a living organism used in metabolism. Okay, so used in metabolism. Now we're going to talk about metabolism in a second, but there are four biomolecules we're going to study. Four. Okay, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and vitamins. So four of them. Okay, we're going to study them in detail, but it's just off the bat, it's, it's worth noting that you know those four. Because very often, randomly saying a DNA question, what biomolecules, it's protein. Okay, so biomolecule definitely means one of those four ideas. In fact, for around 90% of the questions that involve biomolecule, if you just guessed one of those, you would get the marks anyway, even though sometimes it's outside the realm of the biology course. Metabolism. So metabolism, that's, that's quite important, this, this idea of metabolism here. This definition is important. Metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions in your body. So the sum of them. So every reaction that's going on in your body right now added together. That's what metabolism is. And there's actually two types of, of, met of uh, metabolic reactions, two separate types. We have anabolic and we have catabolic. So anabolic and catabolic. For me, just being, I suppose, being in, into it, anabolic for me, I always think of steroids. I always think of anabolic steroids. Why do people take anabolic steroids? Not me. Why do people take anabolic steroids? Well, to get bigger, to turn smaller muscles into bigger muscles. And that's exactly what this is here. An anabolic reaction. An anabolic reaction turns something that's small 
into something bigger. Okay, and that's all really you need to be aware of. Okay, we're going to study different types of reactions in a sec, but are different examples. But anabolic is small to big. Catabolic is going the other way. Catabolic is something big turning into something small. Okay, cool. Now, I'm telling you now, I'm going to give you examples that I have hand-picked, hand-picked, because we're going to be speaking about them again. Biology, as we've seen, is a big course. We want to condense it as much as possible. We want to be using the same examples. The examiner can ask you for an anabolic reaction in a plant and an anabolic reaction in a human. So that's why I've put those two examples in there. In a plant, an anabolic reaction, i.e. making something bigger, is photosynthesis. Now that's something crucial to our study. We're going to talk about that in detail. But it's taking small pieces and making glucose, so therefore anabolic. A catabolic, or sorry, an anabolic reaction in, in a human or in an animal cell is another part of study, which actually came up, up last year. So in an animal, it's protein synthesis. Okay, so protein synthesis. Now, a lot of people don't like the study of that. It's actually fairly straightforward. But let me just point out to you the word synthesis. Synthesis means to make. So if you think about protein synthesis, photosynthesis, is using light to make food and actually making proteins. That's anabolic. We need to know two, uh, cat or two catabolic reactions, one for a plant and one for an animal as well. Okay, so I'm going to just use digestion and respiration. Okay, so they're two major, major chapters for us as well. Two major chapters. Okay, let me just point this out to you. I know an animal does both of these. I know that. Okay, but we actually also study, and a lot of people miss out on this, that in a plant, a plant actually has to respire as well. I don't want to get into too much detail on it now because we're going to talk about respiration. But respiration is using food and oxygen to make energy, to make ATP. So a plant actually respires too. A lot of people don't think that because they know it photosynthesizes. But the same way once you get food, you have to respire to get energy, a plant does too. So there's my plant and there's my, my animal. Okay, so I, I would learn it in that way. These elements present in food down here, these are quite important. Definitely, I definitely, definitely would know these. We've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And I've strategically, on the right-hand side, put nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are in all the elements we're going to study. They're the most important, C, H, and O. Whereas nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, if you want to put a line and a dash in between those there, they're actually added on if it's a protein, as we'll see in a few minutes. You definitely have to know those elements. Underneath here, we've got a table. And the only reason I've put this table in is because it's in every book that I've ever seen. And the examiner does not ask you questions like that. So what I would do there is I would say to myself, let's not learn that and just hold it for a few minutes. We're going to see that in the salt and water idea, how the examiner actually asks it. I'm going to rearrange that into the exact question that they will ask you. Okay, so just, we don't need to know that table there. So very often in the notes, as you'll see, I put certain diagrams in and certain ideas in, literally to tell you, you don't have to know that, but it is in books and people aren't too sure about what sort of diagram they have to know and what they don't. 